Hello and welcome to Simplify TV, the web series and podcast for agencies, brands, marketers, and media buyers. I'm David McBee. Our guest today is Eric Nelson, co-founder of Fraction Media Group. Eric has led strategic media and engagement planning across all media channels from influencers and CTV to retail media to product placement integrations and lead generation, ranging from network television to local outdoor. Eric's experience crosses from traditional to digital, online and offline, and everything in between. He was a co-founder of 314 Digital in St. Louis and was an adjunct professor at the University of Missouri, St. Louis, teaching digital marketing strategies. Eric, welcome to Simplify TV. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. So, Eric, I understand that Fraction Media Group takes an independent and new approach to the media agency brand vendor relationship. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, definitely independent. Um, how new is is you know in the eye of the beholder? But um, what we're really kind of after is the true transparency that um, a lot of the industry talks about, but doesn't always kind of come through. And what I mean by that is that we really kind of take the foundational element of we don't own anything. Uh, we're not a cash flow organization, so we're not you know looking to you know extend billing terms and those types of things. Uh, we're not chasing hours or large you know scopes of work and things like that. We just want to do the work and have fun, but we want to have the vendors just as much a seat at the table as as we do. So when we're working with brands and clients, we don't want to own anything. So none of that data, none of the information. And even the relationship between like Simplify and our clients, we bring Simplify to the table. Uh, a lot of our status meetings will include our Simplify reps uh, because everybody really needs to kind of know what's going on and what's happening and things like that. So uh, everything from what the clients are actually paying for, where those ads are actually going, we want true transparency in anything and everything that we do. And the clients have been really receptive to it. Um, they really kind of enjoy the fact that we we as an agency don't own anything, but they as the brand own it. So even in terms of even billing, so the billing doesn't actually go through us as an agency. Simplify and those brands actually work together on the financial part of it as much as we do on the planning and the execution side. So it's really a true transparency, soup to nuts all the way through. And it's been really helpful and allows us to kind of get approvals faster, get campaigns started faster, get creative, you know, coded and and in the systems faster and new ideas and things like that because we're allowed because we're allowing you know partners like simplify to come in and do things deeper than the traditional agency model where there's a kind of middleman or go between uh, it's made things a lot faster a lot easier and quite frankly a lot better so instead of taking a google adwords campaign and then marking up the cost of the clicks you set up Google AdWords and they pay them directly and then pay you a, a fee to manage it. And same thing with, with Simplify. I assume you're not like marking up the CPM. You're giving them the actual CPM and then charging a fee for the role that you play. So tell me about that role. How do you not lose clients <laughs> to to go direct to the vendors? What what are you bring to the table and, and how do you position that? Yeah. So what we bring and where we kind of fit in really is, you know, the the overall strategy and then the data on the back end of really being able to interpret the data and not just of what we're doing with an individual partner, but really a much more holistic view. So we're able to kind of connect a lot of the dots between the online and the offline, you know, what's happening with PR, what's happening with influencers and bringing that all together. Um, it just allows us to do it faster and easier. So the way we get paid is we, you know, negotiate with with our clients a, a fair fee, um, but they should know exactly where their money is going. So that's why uh, there isn't necessarily a markup. And there are other ways to do it. This isn't the only way to do it, but we also don't want to be commission based in those types of things where we might have a preference to say, well, we have a larger commission or uh, we can charge a larger fee to work with. Google than we can with Simplify. So we might lean towards Google and we don't ever want to do that. Not We want to do it because it's the right place to do it and the right tactic or the right environment for the brand and for the campaign, not based on how much money we'll make. And we also never want our clients to have to make a business decision every time they pick up the phone to call us. So 
you know, they don't have to worry about, you know, our hours or are we, you know, burning through too many hours too fast? Are we going to come back in six weeks and go, well, we did all that work and now we're out of time. We've got to redo our scope of work and all those types of things. We find we'll have those conversations, but those conversations are a lot easier to have when everything is open and transparent. And, you know, we have partners at the table like Simplify that actually rely on us also to kind of help sell in things because we see more of the global strategy and more of the things that, uh, you know, our Simplify reps may not always be pervy to. I assume that because transparency is such a staple for your company, not only do you pass it along to your clients, but you must insist on it from your vendors as well. We try to. I mean, there's always, you know, there's always room for improvement and things like that. But um, we do lean on the partners that are, are good for us, but also believe in that transparency and that are open and willing to be as transparent as we need them to be and want them to be. And that's on the front end and the back end. So the front end being, you know, being at the table with the client, understanding that there's no markups, understanding how our fees work versus their fees and those types of things. You know, so so there's that piece of it, but also on the data side, right? Understanding, you know, how deep we want to get. And not every client really understands some of the complexity and some of the depth of the data that's actually there and available to them. And that's where, again, we come in and we kind of sift through that with your teams and with the Simplify team to go, okay, what's really relevant? What really matters? And how do we improve upon that? And, and then bringing that to the client together to kind of say, yeah, and here's where the improvements are. Um, maybe it's a new tech. Maybe it's a new you know, way, you know, as Simplify continues to grow, you know, a few years ago is the purchase of Advantage and some of the access now to uh, linear inventory and some of the, just as those things kind of grow, um, it's been really helpful to kind of have everybody together at once. Yeah. Let's talk about CTV for a minute. I mean, it's been around for, a, for several years now and nearly everyone is streaming TV these days. I think I saw a stat the other day says 84% of households regularly stream television. The technology is really still in its infancy. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I, I think there's um, a lot of maturity left in the market, you know, where uh, not only from a technological standpoint, but I think 84% even feels uh, as that as large a number as that is. And if you look at, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an old linear guy. So uh, if you look at old Nielsen data and things like that, 84%, you know, you think, wow, that's a big number. But I almost feel like that's low these days, especially with the availability of so many different platforms and uh, people jumping from platform to platform. Some of the bundling deals that are out there between, uh, like you have an AT&T and, and Max, you have, uh, you know, Verizon and T-Mobile, you know, with, you know, Peacock or Netflix or, you know, one of the other providers. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that start to happen. And I think 84% is probably less. I think the challenge for us too, not only is the tech, we look at it from a tech standpoint, but I think from a consumer standpoint, they don't view it as connected TV. And I think we get caught up in that sometimes as marketers. Um, the, the average person is just kind of going, I just want to watch TV in my living room. And that's kind of where I take CTV. And this is, this is where we start to look at it and go, what environment are we trying to reach that audience in? Because the audience still matters. So, but where are we actually talking to them? Is it on their phone? Is it on their desktop? Is it in the big square box in the living room with some co-viewing and those types of stuff? So I think there's still a lot of advancements to go where we kind of align on the metrics of what CTV is, but also on the technology itself of what what's streaming from where and how and uh, programmatic versus direct and, and all those types of things. There's There's a lot of maturity, I think, that's still yet to come. Yeah. Well, how about these linear buyers that were really, really used to to buying their advertising based on programming? You know, I want to be on the news. I want to be on the Tonight Show. And in the world of streaming TV, we really try to sell audience-based targeting and less prog program-based targeting. What do you say to them? Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a different model, and, and it's I think the two aren't as different as some people may think, right? So, and this is where I've talked a lot over the last couple of years about show level reporting, but not show level buying. So even as a buyer, somebody with a linear background, I don't necessarily want to buy program by program because I want the audience. And I'm really not as concerned where they're watching or what they're watching, as long as I'm getting to that right viewer. But where the show level information really starts to kind of coexist is, 
it brings some of that comfort level to the linear buyer to go, okay, I understand that's where my spot actually ran. But it also brings some clarity to, yes, my viewer, that makes sense that my audience I'm trying to reach is actually the one watching that show. That's a show that they would watch, you know, based on whether we're, you know, looking at MRI data or, you know, other platforms, other kind of third party research and those types of things. We can start to really align those. And I think that will start to ease the comfort of linear buyers. Um, and I think um, conversely, the digital buyers, CTV buyers that are so used to programmatic environments don't understand. I mean, they couldn't tell you what a Nielsen GRP is, you know, so, you know, kind of mixing those two things. I think there's knowledge that needs to go both ways. I think the the CTV style buyers and the digital native buyers need a better understanding of what that linear model was. Um, and I think there's a lot of evolving there. You know, and I think that's like we were talking before, it's where the industry, we need to kind of convalesce over a single metric, a single number way to evaluate some of these things um, as silly or, you know, we can have whatever argument you want over the classic Nielsen numbers and Nielsen ratings. I mean, I've got the Nielsen DMA map over my shoulder. So we can argue about what that was, but it was an industry standard. So if it was bad numbers, it was the same bad numbers for all of us. You know, and I think right now there's a little bit of a challenge of we're all using different evaluation models and different ways to get there. So I think that's part of the challenge and part of the hesitation from a linear buyer who has a very distinct I know what it is. I know how to evaluate. I know how to buy it. And there's a there's a clear, distinct schedule versus what we do in the CTV space, where my prime time is not 8 p.m. to 11. My prime time starts at you know 10 p.m. when my kids go to bed, and I can sit down and start to you know absorb the content that I want. So that's really what's kind of changed here, and I think that's where there's some struggle of differentiation of understanding that an audience is when and where they want to be versus buying the day part in a leader model to say, no, that's when my spot is going to air. I love that you want to target based on data and the audience. And then there's that just that linear soul that you have wants to see the shows that your ads delivered on. But I want to challenge that for a minute, right? So I probably fall into the males over 50 outdoorsy audience, okay? I love to travel. I love to hike, take my Jeep out in the mountains. But um, if you were to target me with those kinds of ads, hiking boots, Jeeps, whatever, you might discover that you're delivering all your shows on rom-coms because I'm a hopeless romantic. And that's like my favorite go-to is watching old, you know, 80s and 90s rom-coms. So when you get that report that says, oh, well, we're delivering these Jeep ads uh, on these shows, Pretty Woman and Overboard and whatever silliness I'm watching, then what do you do with that information? Do you just start to understand, oh, my audience is watching something other than what I thought they were be watching? Or do you say, I think the targeting's all wrong and you kind of freak out about it? No, I, I think there's a little bit of both, right? There's a little from column A, a little from column B on that one. So when I start to look at that and I see, wow, a lot of those rom-coms, so a lot of unexpected things, right? So then that makes me start to question and kind of go through and go, what else am I missing in my other platform? So what am I missing maybe in if I'm doing some display or retargeting? Can I match that back and go, well, what kind of websites am I seeing across there? What's the buying patterns, those types of things. So I can start to match that and start to maybe find a storyline to go, wow, that is the type of content that I want. And now I can change maybe some of my socials, some of my influencers, those types of things. So I can model around that. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? So it doesn't automatically say, well, I, I can't be here, but it might tell me a different story that I've got a wider segment of audience than what I thought. You know, it doesn't have to be the, you know, to that target, you're taking your Jeep out. So I've, I've got to have football and I've got to have, you know, the sports and, you know, the hardcore stuff that I can actually move away from that in some other platforms as well. The second part of that is, you know, again, it's that that opposite thing where I start to go, OK, well, does that make sense? Does that not make sense? Is there a way that I can start to optimize off of that to go, OK, well, do I need to? And then I can bring that also back to the creative teams to say, hey, we're seeing a little bit of this. Is there a message there that we can bring in? And again, this is the media guy saying, 
let's customize our message a little bit. And can we twist that a little bit to kind of meet an audience that maybe we didn't think was there? And then part of that too will be device based, right? So we talk about, again, the environment that I like to chase is a lot of that viewing of the rom-coms, things like that in the big square box in the living room, right? So when we start to see large screen formats, that tells me maybe there's a lot of co-viewing going on as well. So again, now maybe I, I'm spilling into, and this is again, an old linear term, right? Spill. So now I'm not only getting the audience that I want, but I'm also spilling to an influential audience where, you know, maybe your wife or girlfriend, or, you know, everybody's sitting on the couch with you or your kids where they're kind of now getting influence and seeing those spots and those types of things. So again, I can start to adjust creatively or I can adjust. So it doesn't necessarily mean, and this is where I go back to, I don't want to buy show by show in a CTV environment. I still want the audience, but I also want to recognize where that spot is going. So it's more of a verification than it is a, a plan, so to speak. This is why you can be transparent and charge a fee for your consultations, because I think most advertisers would get that information and immediately jump to the conclusion that the targeting is wrong. That's just my opinion, right? But you did make me think of something kind of funny. My favorite Jeep commercial of all time is about this young couple growing older and then buying new Jeeps as they get older. So that's so that's so weird. That's like a rom-com Jeep commercial. Anyway, we're, uh, <laughs> we're, we're way over on time. So let me ask you my, uh, my closing questions, starting with, uh, do you have a favorite uh, podcast or a book that you feel has helped you become successful? Um, I don't know if I have necessarily a favorite, you know, and, you know, I've just started getting into a little bit more, um, you know, the podcast, you know, Neil Patel is somebody that I listen to quite often. Uh, there's a, there's a new podcast. I don't know if it's new, but it's new to me. Uh, the marketing Ar architects. Um, I think they're fascinating and I, I love listening and obviously simplify TV. I, I like to check out anytime there's, there's something new, um, you know, but there's, there's an old Ted talk, uh, Simon Sinek. I think a lot of us know it of the power of why um, this is something it's, it's old. It's been out there forever. I know he's moved on to, to very different things, but that was something uh, in my career that really, it, it was probably one of the first big things that really started to, to twist my brain and go think differently about things and think about why. And that's where I kind of get to this, some of these audience types of things where, you know, understanding, you know, why that's effective or why that's there you know, and, and how it can kind of benefit us in the long way. But so those are the things that, that I kind of lean on. You might be the 10th or 15th person to bring up Simon Sinek. I should really get a, a sponsorship deal going. <laughs> you should. Yeah, that, that'd be, yeah, we got to get him on here and, and kick in a little bit. And uh, what's the best way for people to learn more about you or stay in touch? Uh, it's really, uh, we do everything really kind of pretty much through LinkedIn. Uh, you can find Fraction Media Group or myself, uh, or my partner, James Hacker, we're, we're on LinkedIn. Uh, FractionMediaGroup.com will link back to our LinkedIn. Um, again, when you get a couple of media guys trying to build a website, we kind of went, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Eric. No, I appreciate you being being having me involved and in, in doing what you're doing and uh, excited to see more episodes. Thanks. And thank you guys for watching. Simplify TV is sponsored by Simplify, helping you to maximize relevance and multiply results with our industry-leading media buying and workflow solutions. For more information, visit simply.fi. Thanks for joining us today. I'm David McBee. Be awesome, and we'll see you next time.